took it back. We had dominion. I remember the story. And I believe this was the man's name. I, I, I want to make sure it's been a long time. but He was an old time, powerful man of God. He taught me also a lot about faith. He was Rod Parsley's pastor. I believe his name was Lester Sumrall. He told the story about one time he went overseas. Watch this. It's been in my spirit to talk about this. I've been thinking about it for days. I wouldn't have remembered it. But you know when you're preaching, I want to, I want to share something with everybody. When you're ministering to people and you're preaching the gospel, these things just come. They're like, they're like a real to real. Everybody, anybody that preaches knows what I'm talking about. And the Bible said that the Holy Ghost will bring these things to your remembrance. And there's a reason that I want you to, say, to know this because this battle that you and I are in, the victory's already been won. But God also wants you to know that when you enter into a place of promise, you enter into a different land that you want, or you have to go into a different place to, to get something that you want, there's still giants there. There's always going to be the enemy's always going to try to keep you from what's yours. But you know what? But you have authority. You need to know your authority. You need to understand your dominion. And the rest of Summer all talked about one night. He said this demon spirit came into his bedroom. He was overseas. And he was, of course, he was in a real bad air, a lot, a lot of demonic activity. And the Spirit of God came in at night and he began to move his bed. He began to shake his bed and he shook his bed out of place. You know, and, I, and, and this, is, this is the way that I feel. You know, there's no fear when you know you have power. But if you don't know you have power and you don't know who you are, then fear is going to grip you. But you know who you are. And, all, and I just want to tell you right now, the weakest Christian, if you want to call them that, that, has, that understands the blood in the name of Jesus and the dominion and authority you have over the devil, you don't have to yell at the devil. You know, I, 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 there's been times we have, there's been other times when this girl right here, we didn't, I just said, look, you know, you don't have to raise your voice. You just tell them, hey, you're going to come out. You ain't going to say nothing. You're going to come out uh, uh, because Jesus said you're defeated. He's already come. That's all you got to do. It's not hard to do, but people want to make it complicated. It's not complicated. But I want to share with you what I remember. The Spirit of God began to deal with me about it early today. He said, you know, don't you remember the time? He said, well, that demon spirit, well, he got up and cast the devil out of the room. And the devil fled. I mean, immediately got up, began to cast it out. But he was so mad about that devil. And this true story has really happened. He was so mad about that devil moving his bed. He told that devil to get back in there. And that devil had to come back. He said, now you move my bed back in the place where you took it out. And that thing began to bounce across the room, praise God. Backed all the way up where it was. Always. Now he said, now get out of here in the name of Jesus. Well, somebody help me preach tonight. God said, we've got power and authority over the devil. I said, power. There is danger in the manger. There's danger. We've got, we've got power. And we've got authority. But it's hidden in us. It's hidden just like Christ was hidden. It's hidden in us. Oh, but don't kid yourself. Because it's always there. Did you just hear what this preacher said? It's hidden in you. It's in you right now. Every one of you. It's hidden in you. Glory be to God, Lord. It's hidden. The devil can't find it. But when it's there and it's needed, it's, 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 it's available in such a great way. Now listen. Another reason that there was danger in the manger is because he is highly exalted. I mean highly exalted. I want you to think about something that means to be exalted. When you exalt something, it's in the high place. It's not down here under your feet. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's like Josh sings a song. It's above everything. And this is the reason that I had this revelation. And I got this revelation before I ever stood in the pulpit. I never knew I was going to stay. But I began to get a revelation that, that, that there is a chain and authority of command. Let me say it again. There is a chain and authority of command. And, and, and there's structures. In this, and I've talked about years ago, I preached a message, the structures of darkness. But I'm going to get a little bit deeper because maybe y'all weren't ready. Some of you maybe weren't ready for the, the deeper things of God. But I realize what it represented. I understand how the demonic and the spiritual realm works more than I have now than I did when I was young. 
But there's one thing that I want you to know. Regardless of how it works, I know that there is a God, the most high God, who is highly exalted. And I don't base it on anything I've ever done. And don't you. I don't base it on any devils I've ever cast out because I didn't cast them out. I don't base it on my ministry or your ministry or what you've done or on any work. But I understand this authority, this chain of command, this, this rank and serial and file number. Can I go on now? And the Bible says, said that God has himself has given him a name that is above every name glory to God and God said this to me today to tell you to explain it to you like this he said tell my church that no name is higher somebody shout no name is higher God said to tell my church that no name is greater hallelujah well glory be to God I'm not done and this is the one that got me because I've never heard him tell me this. And I get excited. Some of you, he may already told you this. But he hasn't ever told me this. He said, and I also want you to tell him that no name carries more weight. Glory to God. Oh, glory to God. You can walk around knowing that you've got the weight of glory in your life. You've got the weight and authority of God. Hallelujah. In your life. And there was danger in the manger. God said too that there was no other name. There's no other name. It has power to save us. None. No other name. I want to I want to show you something. I was watching when they were all in Washington. And they were bearing former President Bush, George Herbert Walker Bush. I've never told anybody this. But him and my mother were very good friends. My mother actually helped him in his campaign. He actually came to my high school, uh, my last year in high school. He was a, a very fine gentleman. And that's all good and well. But here's what I saw was they were standing up. And they were getting up talking about calling him a noble man and all these things. And sitting on the second row was the President of the United States, his wife, President Obama, his wife, Bill and Hillary Clinton and his wife, and, and I can't remember the President's name from Georgia. What was his name? Jimmy Carter and his wife. And I noticed how they were treating each other and everything that was going on. It was almost like I went into a trance, like I was there and I began to preach. And here's what I wanted to tell you. Here's what I heard the Lord tell me. Here's what He said. He said, you know, he said, two plus two is always equals four. He said, two plus three doesn't equal four, and four plus one doesn't equal three. I remember exactly what he said. And he said, you know, he said, all these people, you, you know, they have all this bitter rivalry. You see all this, this unforgiveness and this hatred in their life. You can see it. They point their fingers at this one, and they point their fingers at this one, and they point their fingers... And God began to talk to me about sin. Sin. Period. Sin. George Herbert Bush, or George Herbert Walker Bush, however you want to call him, he might have been a noble man, but he was just like the rest of us. Without Christ, it don't matter what you call yourself. Because Jesus said everybody has sinned. Some, and he went on to tell me, some maybe have sinned greater than others. And the sin that they've committed has affected people greater than other people. Yet people want to cast stones. It's like Gillis preached about. You better hear me. I'm talking to you. From the heart of God. I'm telling you. He told me these things. But he said, but Mark, everybody has sinned. I've sinned. You've sinned. We've all sinned. But when we come to Christ, then we take on a new nature. We become a new creature. We become a new being. God went on to tell me how the enemy, how he steals from the people of God. And what he does is he draws a facade and, you know, he makes people get over into pride. And here's how he does it. Because I'm looking at these people and the great accomplishment that they've made and the great things that they've done. And they have, they've done great things in the earth. But great things in the earth don't get you into heaven. Your great name in this earth is not greater than the name of Jesus. And God went on to say that their pride, here's what caused them. He said that they'd been blessed. He said they'd been highly blessed. Some of them are multi-millionaires. All of them are millionaires. Some more than others. You know, they call Hillary Clinton a witch and they call Obama a Muslim. But Jesus said regardless, He said, you know, 
it don't matter who they are, they're, two plus two is still four. And there's not two right answers. There's only one right answer, God said. And there's only one way. And He said to me, and I want to say to you, this danger in the manger was saying, I am the way, and I am the truth, and I am the life. And I've come this night, and I've got shepherds, the humble people, the ones that, that just were humble, the ones that didn't have anything, and they, and they loved me. And He said, I went to them, and I was born in this manger. That all have sinned. Every one of us. And then I read this scripture tonight. And there was a prophecy given out here a long, long time ago. About our church. And this was the scripture that God used. Not because it's a building. Because who's in the building. Not because of the preaching. Or because of anybody. Of any, any but one of us. But because of who's in the building. And who we love and who we serve. And you know, we, we've come a long way and we've had to overcome a lot of obstacles. But God said, But thou Bethlehem Ephrathah, though thou be little among the thousands of Judea, yet out of thee shall he come forth unto me that is to be ruler in Israel. See, I know a ruler. I know this king. I don't just know him on these pages. I don't just know him in mental ascent. But we know him. She was talking about him. I'm talking about him. But I'm not talking about him as somebody that doesn't know him. I'm telling you, I know that he's alive. I know that he is who he says he is. I know that He is the Messiah. I know that He is a Redeemer. I know that He said right here, and He went on to say, Out of thee shall He come forth unto me. That is to be ruler in Israel, whose goings, praise God, help me preach church, forth have been of old, He said, praise God, even from everlasting. See, Mary understood something. Because when you know that you know when you've been either visited by an angel and she saw Gabriel himself, the messenger from heaven. She saw him. She looked right in his eyes. And when you had the same with you, when you had the revelation of God in your heart, there's nobody, not a devil, not a man, not anybody that can steal what God has called you to. And God's called you to greatness. Everybody in here, you've been called to greatness. Who, me, great? I don't mean greatness in an arrogant thing. I don't mean greatness in a prideful thing. But you've been called to great. You've been called to do great things. Greater works, he said, than these will you do. And it's, it's true. It's going to happen. It has happened. We've been blessed. We've been, we've been blessed because he has come out of this, this place. In the night that I knew, that I knew, that I knew, because I had a lot to learn when I first got here. We all, we all grew up together. But the night I was going to see Nikki in the hospital, and I went down by Maryville one night, and I wanted to decree. I, he said, God said, decree something in the earth, and I wanted to decree what he said. He said, you know your problem? He said, you've always envisioned a large church. He said, I envision a great church. And it's settled. It's already been done. His word is already settled. And there's no devil that can take that out of my heart. And we know when God gives you a word, I'll give you another. And then when I come to Greenback, and I'm standing there the first time in that house on top of the mountain, and I'm standing there and fear's trying to grip me. I don't know why. Fear's trying to grip me. God said, do you really think I was going to give you something bad? I've come to know Him this way. I used to, I mean, don't get me wrong, I fear God, but I understand Him a whole lot better now than I did when I first started. God's got an incredible sense of humor. He's not out there to get you. He's not out there to destroy you. He's not out there to hurt you. If He was, we'd all be in hell. No, He's not, he's not that way at all. And then later on, five steps from where I would die, we measured the other night, maybe five and a half steps from where I died in that chair, I can remember the voice of God. The second thing He said, I did not bring you here to destroy you. I brought you here to bless you. He knew what was going to happen in that chair. I didn't, but He did. I, see, fear gripped me. I just felt like something was going to happen. I, I tell you what I believe now. I believe He is letting me know, yes, something's going to happen, but I got you. You're not going to die. I'm not done with you. And when you die, I'm not dead. No, hey, if I ever die before you, and I hope I don't, I hope we all go up together. But if I do, don't tell anybody I'm dead. I'll be more alive than I've ever been. And so will you. Why? Because of this person right here. Because of Jesus. The same one Christian was talking about tonight. Who's going... Forth have been from old, from everlasting. I'm talking about the Savior of the world. I'm talking about the one, praise God, that's brought you this far. He's brought us a long way. 
You know, and I was studying the other night, Ivan, I was going to preach on this. I may still preach on it. I've been doing an in-depth study when he said, let us go over to the other side. And he said, have you ever thought about that? Have you ever thought? He said, there wasn't a whole lot of people. He said, you're always, and I am. He said, you're always looking about.